Hello, everybody. This is Appa Brian and Appa Baseball Classics bringing to you iconic moment number 14, the Bucky Dent home run in the 1978 playoffs. Yesterday's game, we used dead ball, a basic dice game, baseball dice game. And uh, that is a fairly new game to the channel. I've played it a little bit in the past, not very much probably play maybe a half a dozen games. And anytime I use a new game, <clears throat> I try to figure out the basic engine and just play the basics and don't worry so much about the details and don't worry too much about mistakes. I probably made some mistakes yesterday. I know in the first inning yesterday, I should have rolled a defensive roll that I forgot to do. But you're gonna make mistakes when you learn new games. The key is to jump right in and play it and then take it part by part. We're going to add a new part to dead ball baseball in today's game. That is the oddities table that's found in book number three, the book you see over my right shoulder with the ladies at the ball ball game. Uh, the oddities table can be found on page 19 of dead ball year three. And what that is, is it's two 10 sided dice. Whenever you roll your modified swing score, you roll uh, the three dice to get that. That's uh, a hundred sided die, a 10 sided die, and a different color pitch pitch die uh, based, which, based on the pitcher's ERA. You add that all together, and every time you come up with numbers one or 99, then you roll two 10 sided dice and apply that to the oddities table. All the weird things that happen in a baseball game the hit by pitches, pass balls, wild pitches, rain delays. There are two possible tables, one that Mark Akers gives you in that uh, book, or uh, he gives you a table where you can put your own oddities in, the weird things you've seen in a baseball game or can imagine up in a baseball game. Uh, Morgana, streakers, 10 set beer night, whatever weird thing you've ever seen at a baseball game. And that will add a little more flavor to your contest on the tabletop. So that's the tip for today. When you learn a new game, just add part the details part by part as you get more and more familiar with the game. All right, pull up a chair. Join us today for the 1978 playoff game between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. This is only the second time in American League history that a one-game playoff game was necessary. First was Cleveland and New York in 1948 to the 1948 World Series. Another one was necessary in 78 when the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees played their first 162 games and they each won 99 times. <laughs> This is Apple Baseball Classics, where yesterday's stars performed through cards and dice. Classic games on our tabletops. Hello everybody, this is Appa Brian and Appa Baseball Classics, iconic moment number 14 in the project, the Bucky Dent home run on October 2nd, 1978. We've had our introductions and Mike Torres is on the mound. His pitch die is a four, which is a negative, let's see, that would be a negative four. Pitch die will be red. The batter target die will be gray, the 100-sided die, and 10-sided die. And then this will be the hit die when there's a base hit. So as you know, in uh, this game, dead ball, a baseball dice game, you roll 
all these dice that gives you a modified score at least these three will give you a modified score and you compare it with the batter's base hit target fbt or also the obt the on base target see if he gets a hit or walk and then the next five numbers i need to remember to check the defense the way i do it is with a six-sided die and based on the team's fielding percentages we'll determine whether there's an error or not and that is this chart here error chart mike torres is on the mound for the red sox he had an era of 3.96 that will be the four-sided die subtracted from the two gray die all right already Ludolph batter is Mickey Rivers, followed by Thurman Munson and Lou Pinello. Rivers step, checks in the box. Here's the first roll of the game. He rolls a 52. That's going to be an out. Remember, we take the type of out off the 10-sided die, and zeros are strikeouts. So Mickey Rivers goes down swinging. He's the first out. That's how this game begins today. Thurman Munson, the Yankee catcher. Torres goes into the wine. Here's the pitch. That's a 9. We refer to 19 for the hit type. Thurman Munson had 6 home runs in 1978. So that is, it would take a 20 on the hit table to, to be a home run. This is my revised table. This is for dead ball baseball. But that would take a 20. The next number down is going to be a triple. So it's a leadoff triple for Thurman Munson. Not a leadoff triple. I already had a batter. Here is Lou Pinella. Munson 90 feet away. One out. Torres goes into his stretch. Here's the pitch. 94 is an out. And two is going to be a... On the hit table, if 0, 1, and 2 is a strikeout, I use that only for power pitchers who struck out as many batters as they did innings. Let's see, uh, Mike Torres, 77. Let's see, he struck out 90 in 218 innings, so he's not a power pitcher. We'll make the two, the way I to include line, line outs and pop-ups, I make the two out. Uh, one of those two, and 20-sided uh, die, I'll refer to that 1 through 10's line out, or is, um, yeah, and 10 through 20 would be, would be pop-up, and then I'll go back to um, this would be pop-up to right field. So two outs, very shallow right field, not deep enough to score. Munson, and here is Reggie Jackson. Jackson rolls a 33. And that's within his on-base target. So that's a base on balls. Reggie takes first. Now the Yankees have runners on the corners with two outs. And Greg Nettles coming to bat. Greg Nettles swings from the left side. 30-40 is the roll. And... That is six numbers over the on-base target, so that's too high for a defensive check. It's a ground ball to shortstop. That's the third out of the inning. The Yankees threaten, but don't score. Red Sox coming to bat. All right, Rodden Guidry takes the mound for New York. He had a 1.74 ERA in 1978, 25-3. and I remember George Brett would always refer to him as God. He's going to be using a 12-sided die that's added to the two gray dice. So this will be Guidry's defensive dice added to these two die. And Rick Burleson steps in the box for the Red Sox. Here's the pitch to Rick Burleson. 69 is going to be an out. Two is a strikeout as Guidry is a power pitcher. 
zero, one, and two being strikeouts on the out, out die. That brings up Jerry Remy. Remy rolls a 12, that's a base hit. Almost had a chance for a oddity. If that was a 0, zero and this was a one, that would be an oddity check, which we're trying to incorporate today. But this is a hit, so we go to the hit table. That's a single for Jerry Remy. Right, if Remy tries to steal second base, that's an eight-sided dice roll. One to three, he'll be out. Four to eight, he'd be safe. And I think with a tough pitcher like Goodry, Red Sox are going to take that chance and try to make something happen. Here he goes. The roll is a, it's the wrong dice. I rolled, here's the eight-sided dice. Let's try that again. Here's the roll. It's a seven, so Remy is safe. Stolen base. He's at second with Jim Rice at bat. All right, Gidry checks for his sign, goes into the stretch. Here's the pitch from Louisiana Lightning. 90, and we should be using the, for Gidry, the 12 sided dice. So that's a 99. That's a 99. You check the audit, the audit table, and that's right here in the first inning. So we need two 10 sided dice. Add those together. That's a four, and four on page 19 is a rain delay. Rain delay last D100 times two minutes. For every 30 minutes, the game's delayed. Both pitchers drop one PD. Uh, that's their pitch dice level. It's delay last 180 plus minutes. It's postponed. So here's a hundred dice roll times two. Okay, 51 is 102 minutes. That's going to be an hour and uh, 42 minutes. That will be a three pitch die. So we're going to need new pitchers. The new pitcher for New York, as we resume play after a long rain delay, will be Don Gullett. He has a 3.5 earned run average, and he will be a negative four dice. New pitcher for Boston, warming up in their bullpen, is Dick Drago. He, and he is a plus four dice. All right, we're ready to resume play. Jerry Remy is at second. The batter is Jim Rice. Here's the pitch from Don Gullet to Jim Rice. And see, so we're, we are adding the four. So 63 is a strikeout. Two outs. Here is the patron saint of Boston, Carl Yastrzemski. Eighty-eight. Plus the four is 92, and that is a fly out to center field. That ends the first inning, an eventful first inning. No score. Don, Dr Don Drago takes the mound for Boston. Here's the pitch to lead off better Chris Chambliss. He'll be followed by Roy White and Brian Doyle. 32, we are adding... Drago's number, so 33, is one above the on-base target number, so we'll, we will roll for an error. Boston it was 0.977, and on my air chart, a roll of between nine, 963 and 978, so 4 through 6 will be an error, with the even numbers being two base errors. The roll is a 4, that's an error, a two base error. Let's come up with a, let's see, fielder would be, let's re-roll this, figure out the fielder who made the error, pitcher. All right, so two base error, wild throw from the pitcher Dick Drago, puts Chambliss at second base. 
no outs. And Roy White steps into the box. Forty two, forty five. Make that a line out to second base. Runner holds it second. Here is Brian Doyle. Doyle rolls a 86. Ground out to the second baseman. Ball was hit hard. Runner will not be able to advance as it's over 70. It's a non productive out, two outs. And now the number nine hitter, Bucky Dent. In the actual game, his eighth inning three-run homer was the iconic event. Uh, he went on to become the most valuable player in the 1978 World Series by hitting 417 with seven RBIs in that series against the Dodgers. Here's a pitch to Bucky. 65 is going to be a pop-out to third base. Uh, neither of these are would be power pitchers, so twos will be line outs and pop ups on the out chart. So that's the third out in the top of the second inning. The Yankees have had runners in scoring positions both innings. They have not scored. Here comes the Red Sox for the bottom of the second inning. Don Gullo is on the mound. He is a negative four, 3.54 ERA. It's just barely over the 3.5 threshold. So he's subtracting the four-sided dice from the gray dice. 37 for Carlton Fisk is a base on balls. That's just right on his OBT number. Fisk takes first, no outs, not a threat to steal. Freddie Lynn turned the bat. 98 plus, uh, let's see, minus 4 would be 94. Fly out to center field. Non-productive out. Over 70. So the runner holds it first. One down. Here's Butch Hobson. I last saw Butch Hobson managing the Chicago Fire and the American Association Independent Minor League team. That was a few years ago. I don't know if he's still managing Carl Zambrano. Carlos Zambrano, if you remember the old Cubs pitcher who had a temper. He was playing as a position player on that team and hitting in the high 300s. All right. Um, the roll is a 21. And that's going to be a base hit. 11 on the hit chart is a single and the runner advances two bases. So Fisk goes a third. Red Sox have runners at the first and third station with only one down. And the batter is George Scott. Yankees will play the infield back, hoping for a double play. Here's the pitch. Okay, so 60 minus 3 is 57. George Scott, that's going to be an out. And a swing and a miss, strike three. That's an important time for Gullet to get a strikeout. He had 116 strikeouts in 158 innings. That doesn't make him a power pitcher. He was at one time with the Reds, definitely a power pitcher. The ninth hitter in the order, Jack Brohammer, comes up with a chance to get the Red Sox on the board. Here's the roll to Brohammer. And 71 minus 3 is 68. That's going to be a swing and a miss, strike 3. So it does get two strikeouts. Sets aside the Red Sox before they can score. We go to the top of the third. Nothing, nothing. Now with Dick Drago on the mound, we still use the four-sided pitch tie, except we add it to the total rather than subtract it. He had a lower ERA. And leading off is the number one hitter in the lineup, Mickey Rivers. 34 is four over the on-base number, so we're going to roll for defense. Four through six would be an error. It's not an error. Two is a pop-up to shortstop. And once again, let's look at that hit chart. What I'm doing there is 
not the hit chart, but the out table. Zeros and ones are strikeouts. Two on, is normally a strikeout, but I do that only for power pitchers. If it's not a strikeout, the two will be a line out or pop up. And then I look at this die, the hit, the hit die for the out instead of this for the out. 10 through 20, I make them pop ups, one through nine line outs. And um, that six tells me shortstop. Thurman Munson comes to bat. Munson rolls a 13. That's going to be a single. Seven on the hit chart is a single. One out. Thurman's on first. He tripled his first time up. He is two for two. Lou Pinello steps into the box. I always thought Lou Pinello was a very stylish ball player. Stylish. I liked his hitting style. Uh, didn't have a tremendous amount of power, but was a good hitter. Here's the pitch to Lou Pinello. That's 80, or fly out the right field. Non-productive out, over 70. Two outs. Here is Reggie Jackson, the man who stirs the pot. Here's the pitch. 36 for Reggie is a base on balls. First and second, two outs. The Yankees have threatened in every inning. Still no score. There is here is Greg Nettles who rolled out the shortstop his first time up. Dick Gregor goes into the stretch. Here is the pitch. 24 is going to be for Nettles a base hit. 12 is a single with a two two base advance. That scores Munson and sends Reggie to third. One to nothing Yankees. Chris Chan wants to turn the bat. Just two outs. The infield will be playing back. 66 is a ground ball to second base. That's the end of the inning. But the Yankees get on the board. It's New York one and Boston nothing. All right, now we're subtracting the pitch die as Don Gullett returns to the mound. And leading off is the top of the order for the Red Sox, Rick Burleson. 63 is a fly ball to left field taken by the left fielder Roy White, one away. That brings up the number two hitter, Jerry Remy. Remy singled and stole a base. Then we had that long rain delay in the, back in the first inning. So here we are with a 45 roll, fly out the right field. Two outs. That brings up Jim Rice. And that is a 72 is going to be a pop up to second base. Three outs. We go to the fourth, New York one and Boston nothing. A capacity crowd here today at Fenway, over 32,000 to see this playoff game. Roy White will lead off against Dick Drago to kick off the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. We're adding the four-sided die now. And that's going to be a roll of 10, a base hit, 17. That's the ball driven to the gap in left center field. It's going to one-hop up against the green monster. And... It will figure in as a double for Roy White. Brings up Brian Doyle, the runner on second base. Doyle's target number is 19. Uh, he doesn't have walks, so 19 is his hit number. He has no OBT number. 88 plus the four is 92. That's a fly out to center field, and that's a non productive out. It's too shallow for the runner to advance. That brings Bucky Death. Popped out to third his first time up. 75 is a, let's see, line out to the shortstop, two outs. 
here's Mickey Rivers. And 64 is a ground out to first base, taken unassisted by the first baseman, Boomer Scott. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Yankees won and the Red Sox nothing. All right, back we, uh, in the bottom of the fourth, we reconsider the pitch die. Don Galt's on the mound. He subtracts his four pitch die from the two gray die. Cario Scrimpsey steps into the box for Boston, swinging the bat from the left side. Here's the pitch to Yaz. That's a four, and 14 will be a long drive to center field. It gets over the head of Mickey Rivers for two bases for Yastrzemski. He's in scoring position for catcher Carl Fisk. Twenty, say thirty-one minus three is twenty-eight, and that's within fifths, just right on his batter total, and that's going to be a hit. Sixteen for Fisk. That's a long drive for from left field, and that will be a double for Carlton Fisk off the Green Monster, scoring Yastrzemski, and the game is tied. RBI for Carlton Fisk, one to one. He's at second. Fred Lynn. Bob Gillett right into the trouble here in the fourth inning. Here's a stretch of the pitch. 33 to Lynn. That's going to be a base on balls. First and second, Boston. Still nobody out. Here is Butch Hobson. He singled his first time up. He's one for one. Forty-seven is going to be a fly out to center field, and it's deep enough to move the runners. That's a productive out. So Fisk goes to third. Lynn goes to second. One away. Runners are in scoring position. Boomer Scott. Now, I don't play the same kind of defense that the game suggests. Uh, there's a lot of re-rolls involved with that. And I've explained the simple way that I play defense. So I can't apply dead balls rules for infield in. What I do is my own home rules for infield in. I increase, increase the batter's batting average by five or his BT by five. That would make Scott a 28 if I play the infield in here. And uh, does not increase his uh, OBT. But we can try to hold the runner to third and play the infield in, which is what we're going to do. Here's a pitch to George Scott. 33, that's 2 over his 31, so I'm going to roll a 6-sided die to check for an error. And 5 is an error, one base error. We'll make that on the third baseman, but try the third baseman, uh, Greg Nettles. E5, one base error, that scores Fisk. Lynn goes to third, Red Sox are in, on the corners. And now the batter is Jack Brohammer. First and third, uh, Yankees play the infield back, try to get the double play. 39 is the roll. Brohammer's uh, on base total is 30. So that's a ground ball to first base, but it's a productive out. Three to six, that retires Scott at runner on first. Lynn scores, and Broheimer is on by the fielder's choice. He gets an RBI, and Boston takes a 2-1 to one lead. Two outs, and now the top of the order, Rick Burleson. 51 is a ground ball to second. Brian Doyle throws to Chambliss at first. That's the third out. Let's go to the fifth inning. Again, every time you change a half inning, reconsider the pitcher's rating. Uh, we're still using the four-sided dice for the uh, rating uh, ERA of Dick Drago. 
it was below 3.5, so it's you add the four side of five. I think his ERA was about 303. Let's look, look that up exactly. Drago was a yeah 303 ERA, so that's a plus four die modification on the two gray die. Yankees are up. Here is Thurman Munson stepping in the box. He's two for two, tripled and singled. Here's the pitch to Munson. This is going to be another hit. That's a five and 17 for Munson. He had six home runs. That's going to be a double for Thurman Munson. He's uh, three quarters of the way to a cycle. Just needs a home run. But it's going to take a roll of 20 on the hit dot die, die for him to get a homer. He only hit six in uh, 1978. Here is Lou Pinella. Yeah, he's had a tie and run in scoring position. Drago goes into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Uh, that's the roll of two. Just misses the oddity table. And 13 on the hit die is going to be a double scoring Thurman Munson. RBI for Pinella. It's three to two. All right, now Pinella's at Lou Pinella's at second base, and that brings up Greg Nettles. Pitch from Drago. 59's a ground out to third, and uh, Pinella will go to third on the productive out. Here is Greg Nettles. That last bit, I'm not sure who I said that was. That was Jackson who rolled out to third. Here's Greg Nettles. 51 is an out. The infield's playing back. And um, seven's a fly out to left field, a productive out. Runner tags and scores. RBI for Greg Nettles. Yankees three, Red Sox three. Now the bases are clear, and it is Chris Chambliss' turn to bat. And the roll is a 10. That's going to be a 17. Chambliss had 12 homers, so it would take a 20 for that to be a home run. That's going to be a double. Third double in the inning. Chambliss goes to second. Here is Roy White. Sixty-one. That's a swing and a miss. Strike three. Third out. But the Yankees scored twice in the fifth inning and tied the score three to three. Don Gallo of the Yankees is still pitching. That's, we're subtracting the four-sided die. And the leadoff hitter for Boston in the last of the fifth is Jerry Reming. New ball game. Three-three tie. Pitch to Jerry Reming is a three. That's going to be a single for Remy. As we saw before, he is a threat to steal. And that brings up Jim Rice. I think he's going to hold. Pitch to Rice. Uh, that's going to be a roll of a three or 15. Rice, let's see, had 46 home runs. So a 15... Is 16 through 20 would be his homer total. 15 is one below. That's going to be a triple for Jim Rice driving in Remy and returning the Red Sox to the top of the pecking order. It's Boston 4 and New York 3. There's Carl Yastrzemski. That's an 85 roll, and that's a fly ball to center field. Caught by Mickey Rivers for the first out of the bottom of the fifth inning. Oh, wait a minute. Um, time out. 85 is a non productive out, so that was too shallow to score. The runner at third, Jim Rice. Here is Carlton Fisk. One down, Rice at third. 
56 or fly out the right. That is far enough. And Rice tags and scores. RBI for Carlton Fisk is second in the game. And Red Sox take a 5-3 to three lead. Two outs, bases clear. Fred Lynn. All right, 40 is the roll, and that's a ground out to second base. Except it's uh, we need a defensive roll because the LBT for Lynn is 38. That's only two over. Makes the play four to three. That's the end of the inning, but Boston scores twice in the bottom of the fifth inning. Red Sox five, Yankees three. For the sixth inning, Dick Drago returns to, for Boston. There is a reliever warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Sparky Lyle is warming up, and we might see him for the bottom of the sixth inning. But for now, it's Dick Drago, and we're adding the four-sided die. Here's the pitch to the first batter of the sixth inning, who is Brian Doyle, the second baseman. That's a roll of 13, a base hit for Brian Doyle. Doyle is not a threat to steal. He did not steal any bases in 1978. He was caught three times in that activity trying to do it. So here is the next batter. That's Bucky Dent. Bucky Dent's over two. Here's a pitch from Drago. 63 is the roll. That's a fly out to right field. A productive out deep to right field. So Doyle tags and goes to second. One away. Doyle's in scoring position for the top of the order and Mickey Rivers. Rivers is 0 for 3. He gets a hit here. That's going to be a 5. 15 is a double for Rivers scoring Brian Doyle. RBI for Mickey Rivers. 5 to 4. Timeout Boston. Manager Don Zimmer is going to go to the bullpen and he's going to bring in this big gun in the bullpen, Bob Stanley. Stanley was 15 and 2, 2.60 earned run average. That means he'll be using a 2.6 ERA, be an eight sided die, pitch die. And that will be added to the two gray die. Well, we will have to re uh, apply different fatigue uh, rules to him. Uh, his second inning of work will go down. One grade, but that still makes him a plus four. Bob Stanley pitching to Thurm Thurman Munson with Mickey Rivers at second base. Brian Doyle has scored in this inning already to pull the Yankees to within one. Here's a pitch to Thurman Munson, who's trying to hit for the cycle, three for four. And that is a 34. That's just one above his OBT number. We'll roll the air dice. It could be a strikeout, so we'll see if he catches a strikeout. He does. It's a strikeout of Munson. I say he's three for four. Now he's three for four. He was three for three with a single, double, triple. Here's Reggie Jackson. Two outs. And Reggie rolls a 46. That's a ground out to third, ending the Yankees' half of the sixth inning, but they score. It's Boston 5 and New York 4. Sparky Lyle is brought into the game to pitch for New York. He has a plus 4 pitch die, and um, he'll be working to the bottom of the Boston order, Butch Hobson, Boomer Scott, and Jack Brohammer. Here is Butch Hobson. And I need to use the... Plus four pitching, pitching die. That is a 79 fly ball to the left field. Caught by Roy White. One away. Boomer Scott. Thirty-four is three over his OBT, so we need to roll the air dice. And one is uh, successfully completed catch for a strikeout. One one on the out die is a catch for a strikeout. Two outs. And Jack Bohammer. 
That's a hit for Brohammer. B6, 11 is a single. Two outs, the Red Sox have a runner on. Top of the order and Rick Burleson. At least you're making the pitcher pitch from the stretch. Uh, if he doesn't normally already pitch the Sparky Law, he already pitches from the stretch. And in modern times, I think I've said this before, more and more pitchers are pitching from the stretch full, you know, in every occasion so that they don't have to maintain two different pitching motions. Here's the pitch to Burleson. And that is a eight. That's going to be a base hit, a single, one base advance, single pass the second baseman. Red Sox have runners on first and second. Here's Jerry Remy. Remy is two for three, stole a base, scored a run. Okay, 32 is the roll. So Remy is a 32 OBT. That's a base, bases loaded walk. Red Sox at every station. Here's Jim Rice, 46 home runs on the year. Tripled his last time up to drive in Jerry Remy in the fifth inning. Here's a stretch, the two out pitch to Jerry Rice. 74 is gonna be a ground ball to first base. Unassisted, that's the third out. And Boston loads the bases, but don't doesn't they don't score. We go to the top of the seventh. Still lead Red Sox five, Yankees four. All right, now the second inning of relief for Bob Stanley. He goes down one pitch die uh, level, so it's a four sided die added to the two grays for this inning. Bob Stanley will be facing Reggie Jackson, Greg Nettles, and Chris Chambliss. Here's the pitch to Reggie. 75 is a swing and a miss, strike three. Reggie goes back to the bench, a strikeout victim. Here's Greg Nettles. Okay, that's a roll of 40. And Nettles is a 34. That's more than five over, so that's going to be an out, fly out to right field. Two outs. Here's Chambliss. Eighty-two is a fly out to center field, caught by Fred Lynn. That's three up and three down for New York in the seventh. They still trail by one, five to four of the Red Sox. All right, Sparky Lyle in his second inning of work goes to a negative four pitch die. Uh, again, that's that fatigue rule for relief pitchers. They drop a level for every run allowed, and if they pitch more than one inning, they drop a level. So here goes Sparky Lau pitching to Carl Yastrzemski. Now we subtract the one. 75 is a ground out to shortstop. Yaz is out. One down. Carlton Fisk. One for one with a double. He also has a sacrifice fly and two RBIs. Fisk rolls a 88. Or a one that's a strikeout on the out die, two outs. Fred Lynn. And that's a 49, a swing and a miss, strike three for Lynn. So Sparky Law does the job for New York. We go to the top of the eighth inning. It's Boston five and New York four. Okay, Bob Stanley remains a plus four. He stays in the game. Um, it does not say on the fatigue rules that the pitcher is reduced, relief pitcher is reduced one die for every inning. He just says one past the first inning. So he's, he's going to remain at plus four and stay in the game. He's pitching to the tail end of the Yankee order. Roy White steps in for New York. 47 is a ground ball to shortstop. Rick Burleson's got it, throws the first. One away. Here's Brian Doyle. One for three, scored a run. 
That's a 36. It's well over his batter total. Ground out to first base. Scored three to one. And now Bucky Dent. This is the inning he hit his shot. There's nobody on base. But it was the eighth inning of the actual game where he hit the three-run home run. Here's the pitch to Bucky Dent. If he does it here, I'll tie the score. And that is going to be a hit, but three is a single. Maybe he starts a rally here for New York. Two outs. Dent's at first. He only stole three bases in uh, 78, so we're going to hold him at first. Mickey Rivers, the top of the order. Pitch from Bob Stanley to Rivers is an 80-91, and that's an out, fly out to left field. Three outs. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Five to four, Boston. All right, manager Bob Luna of the Yankees is going to bring in a reliever. His uh, closer, Goose Gossage, are down by a run, but he has had a 2.01 ERA, and this is the pitch die we use for him. That's a plus eight. So Goose Gossage is on the mound for New York. Schedule hit for Boston is Butch Hobson, uh, George Scott, and Jack Brohammer. Here's the pitch to Hobson. And we're adding that plus eight down. So it's an 82 roll. Ground ball to second base. One away. Brian Doyle made that play for New York. Here's George Scott. Scott rolls a 28. That will be over his hit total, but below his OBT total, that's a walk. Scott takes first. With one down, Jack Brohammer is the batter. Brohammer will swing away. He rolls a 39 plus 3 is 42. That's going to be a fly out to right field. Deep fly out. Productive out. Scott tags up, goes to second. Two outs and Rick Burleson. Burleson rolls a 55. That's a strikeout. Three outs. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Red Sox will advance with three outs. They lead five to four. Bob Stanley goes back out to the mound. He's using the four-sided pitch die. It's plus four to the two gray die. He's pitching to a tough part of the New York order. Thurman Munson, Lou Pinella, and Reggie Jackson. Munson, going for a cycle, has tripled, single, doubled, and struck out. He's three for four. Here's the pitch to the Yankee catcher. And that is going to be a hit, too, as a single. He represents the tie and run on first base. No outs. Brings up Lou Pinella. Pinella is one for four with a double. He's got an RBI. Pitch to Sweet Lou. 41 plus uh, two is 43. That's going to be an out. Seven over his OBT, so there's no defensive roll. And the out is a one. It's a swing and a miss for a strike three. One down. Two to go for Bob Stanley and his Red Sox. Reggie Jackson steps in. He is 0 for 2. Two walks. Pitch to Reggie. And that's a 96 to be 100. That's an out. We missed the... Uh, oddity table by one, but that's a ground out to shortstop, and it's going to be a non productive out, which is a 6 4 3 game inning double play. Red Sox win and move on to the playoff series with the Kansas City Royals. The final score Boston Red Sox 5 and the New York Yankees 4. We'll be back with a wrap up. Well, we got the actual score 5 to 4, but it's reversed to the favor of the Beantown. The Boston Red Sox are winners today, 5-4. to four. Yankees scored four runs on 10 hits, one error. Boston, five runs, seven hits, and one error. The Yankees had a balance attack. Everybody except Reggie hit safely in the lineup. Uh, Reggie did draw two walks, but he grounded into a game-inning double play. That wasn't great for New York. Everybody else got a hit. 
The uh, winning pitcher was, I'm going to give it to Bob Stanley, three and two-thirds innings, no earned runs allowed. And the loser was Don Gullett, five and two-thirds innings pitch with two-thirds or four runs allowed. Sparky Lyle pitched two innings of effective relief for the Yankees. Star of the game is reliever Bob Stanley, who finished out the game three and two-thirds innings and held the Yankees to just one hit, struck out two, actually struck out three, didn't walk anybody. Uh, if the Yankees had won, Thurman Munson would have been the star of the game. He went three, three, four, four for five, and two singles, a double, triple, almost hit for the cycle. But it's Bob Stanley, who is today's star of the game. It's a little hard for me to broadcast when I'm doing a new game and not make mistakes and just not do it. It doesn't come across smoothly, but we'll stay with it. Uh, I think the next couple of games will probably be Apple, but there will be more um, payoff pitch, or not payoff pitch, but more of uh, the dead ball baseball games uh, in this project because I don't have all the teams I, that I want to play. And that's where this game really shines. You know, you don't have to buy cards. Well, you need stats and RPG dice to play this game and pencil and paper to score it. Hope you enjoyed this. For now, this is Appa Brian and the Appa Baseball Classics Channels signing off. So long, everybody.